What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the six best ways, in my opinion, to earn extra income either on the side or as just icing on the cake because you like money. Now, this list is pretty much tiered, starting off with kind of like the first one being the easiest, all the way down to the sixth item, which essentially uh, requires typically the most capital and will be the most difficult to do. So let's kick this list off, starting with number one selling stuff now that's pretty broad i will say that in this category it's going to be a very very broad category uh, what i'm talking about though specifically are selling items that you currently have in your possession are free that you can pick up through facebook or craigslist or are some you know maybe collectible items that you might pick up at like a garage sale doing it the gary v way and then selling them on the internet to make you some extra cash now when we're talking about this category of selling things what I'm really talking about is the most simplistic form of it, which are items you currently have, uh, maybe items that you can pick up free from Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace boards, or just items in general that you might find out and about, uh, maybe at like a Marshalls or you buy them uh, you know, at one of these like discounted stores and then sell them on Amazon. So it's very, very broad, but let's kind of start with the um, items that you already have in your possession. So let's start this off with something that I do personally, which is Poshmark. Now Poshmark, for those of you that are unfamiliar, is essentially just like a, a selling board for clothing, shoes, anything apparel, bags, anything like that. So it's stuff that, you know, if you're cleaning out a closet, cleaning out your dresser, whatever the case is, it's stuff that you might just consider donating, right? Now instead of donating it, or taking it to like a Play-Doh's closet, or, you know, just a store donation where like a Goodwill, you can actually make some cash off of it. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and say that you shouldn't donate some items every now and then uh, and be a good person. What I am saying is, if you paid good money for a fit from H&M or you paid good money for a fit from Express or something like that, and you really just don't wanna donate something like that because you paid like 150 bucks for the outfit, sell it on Poshmark, you can probably make about 50% of your money back. Now, the great thing about Poshmark is it blasted out to everyone. It's a large scale app, so you can sell to really anyone in the United States for international fans, honestly don't have a clue if you can do that, but at least here in the United States, I know that they can sell to, uh, to those, at least the 48 contiguous ones because of shipping. So it's pretty simple. If you have a clothing item to sell, take a picture of it, put the you know original price that you paid, put the price that you wanna sell for it, send it out, right? And obviously there are ways to get uh, followers on there and kind of make more money. If you're in a scenario like myself where you kind of lose a little bit of weight, Clothes aren't fitting too well. Uh, you can start selling some of the other stuff that you had in your closet that might've been higher end, and you can actually make some cash off of it. And it's very, very easy to do. They send you the label. All you gotta do is put it in a box, send it to the post office. Good to go, they make money. And you make money, which is obviously what we're here for. Now, the other method to this is a little bit more, I guess, aggressive. Uh, this is kind of like the Gary V garage sale method, if you're familiar with Gary V and kind of how he would go to like garage sales and you know, buy stuff for super cheap, buy trading cards, whatever, and then sell them online. That's gonna be a little bit more involved, but a little bit of research, a little bit of uh, knack with Google, you can get it done and sell some items. Moving on to number two, which is food delivery. Again, very simple, very simplistic, doesn't take a lot of time to do, does not take a lot of moving parts. You pretty much just download an app, fill out these applications, right? And then once you're certified, you can just deliver the food. And you can deliver whenever and wherever that you choose. So if you work a nine to five, you're an entrepreneur, you just wanna make some extra cash, food delivery. So like DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, any of those are stuff that you can do. Now I myself, again, I don't do this, I don't do this personally. I do have a lot of friends who have used this. And what's interesting is uh, I know a lot of people that are kind of in their first year of their business, right? Like whether they're a real estate agent or they're just starting a business on their own, they utilize DoorDash to pretty much pay the bills and then they do their main occupation as the focus. What's really cool about DoorDash too is that like you can take phone calls while you're in the car driving, you can kind of get some work done on the road like that. So it does have its benefits. Um, so if you are interested in that, food delivery is a great option, especially in 2021 now where restaurants aren't really open to full capacity. A lot more people are dining in at their homes and they're just staying in for date nights, that sort of thing. So there's a lot, a lot of demand for it and you can take advantage of that and put some extra cash in your pocket. Moving on to number three, credit cards or more specifically, the points that you can get with credit cards. Now, I don't wanna limit this to just credit cards. Uh, there are some debit cards out there 
for example, Acorns, uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So it's kind of just credit card or debit card points in general. And really what we're going for here is the cash back that you can make. So when you think about credit cards, a lot of people have a lot of negative connotation around credit cards, or they think that if you have this really, really high credit card amount, that it's just not gonna be good for your credit, which couldn't really be further from the truth. Credit is king when it comes to owning a business, when it comes to purchasing assets, when it comes to just large purchases in general, credit cards are a must, and I do think that they can be utilized extremely effectively because think about it, when you wanna buy a car, or you wanna buy a house, or you wanna buy some more real estate, you need credit, you need good credit. You can't just have a credit score, you need to have a really, really good credit score to get the lowest interest rate and to get approved for the most amount of money based on your income. So credit has its place and I do think credit cards are necessary for anyone and everyone and I would recommend as soon as you turn 18 or you get old enough to get one, get one with a lower limit obviously and use it responsibly. Uh, but for this, we're just gonna be talking about finding a credit card that has a really, really good cash back bonus. Uh, they give you points for grocery shopping, or getting gas or the things that you do essentially right now with credit cards specifically uh, I'm talking to business owners now if you're a business owner utilize the ever-living out of credit cards and I say that because you can get so much money back and you can use so many things for write-offs when you own a business that you're kind of like doubling your money when you use them however in this video I just want to talk about the broad topic of utilizing credit card points now, also branching off of credit cards, talk about debit cards, right? There's so many different debit cards and online banking accounts that you can utilize that it will just drive you crazy if you try to do a quick search of them. Now, I myself have an Acorns card and I have an Acorns account. I actually have like, I have like four or five different accounts through Acorns themselves. I've got like an IRA, you know, retirement, uh, just a basic savings and you've got one for each of my kids. Uh, so you can set up a whole like investment portfolio through Acorns but I'm specifically talking about the green metal titanium card that they give you when they ship it in the mail. And for that, uh, it's really cool because you get all those Roundup perks that Acorns offers, but they also offer rewards. For example, like they'll give you 3% back if you shop on Amazon for a specific time frame, right? And it's like, you're already buying stuff on Amazon, so you just get 3% cash back and it just goes right into your investment account and it works really, really well. So there are a lot of debit card programs like Acorns uh, that have a you know multitude of benefits, but they also give you cash back rewards as well for shopping in the places that you already shop. Now, moving on to number four, social media, or this can kind of be looped into affiliate marketing, but I'm really talking about social media and your social media following as a whole. So let's talk about that. Essentially, what, we're, what I'm talking about here is social media marketing to your followers or just marketing products to your following and then making a small commission off of products that your following may purchase from you because they saw it on your feed. Now again, it's just kind of a more broad topic about affiliate marketing, which is exactly the same thing. However, social media blowing up and TikTok, Instagram followings, like just going through the roof. I did wanna kind of talk about social media specifically because as I'm sure you've seen in you know, the news or you've heard it online, there's a lot of people on TikTok, for example, who have become millionaires by amassing a large following and then partnering with companies and selling products or just kind of being like a campaign sponsor for them. So I myself do this. I have several partnerships with several companies and essentially when you're doing this, the biggest thing for me is to think about, you know, what it is that you do, right? Like what, who's your following? What do you do maybe for a career? And just think about like the interest of the follower, right? So I'm a real estate agent, so that's my main profession, that's my occupation, uh, and that's sort of you know who I am as a, as a person in business, right? So when I think to myself, what would a real estate agent wanna market? It's not bang energy drinks, it's not uh, some herbal tea products, right? Like it might be, I, I don't know. But for me, what I thought about was, okay, well as a real estate professional, you know, I do dress a certain way a lot of the time when I'm working with clients, when I'm in the office, that sort of thing. So I like fashion, I like men's lifestyle. So, so what companies could I work with that provide products maybe similar to that? So that's what kind of got me into mine. Now, when you're talking about social media, you've got sponsored posts, um, you have your basic just, you know, being a, an affiliate of the company where you market the product, uh, a, a person sees it on your feed, 
maybe they click it, they buy it, and then you make like a 25% commission or whatever the rate is that you've agreed upon. But those are kind of the ones to keep in mind. Now, again, the biggest thing that I can recommend is that if you're gonna go this route, do it with products or with companies that make sense to you and your following. Again, I'm a real estate professional, so if I was over here holding a can of Bang Energy and I was just like, boom, you know, 14 posts a day, here's my Bang Energy, here's my Bang Energy, it's not really gonna make sense maybe to my following, but if I was in a coffee shop wearing a sick ass pair of these blue light blocking glasses or I was wearing these sunglasses from Jade Black, it might make a little bit more sense because I'm working in a laptop wearing the blue light blocking or I'm out and about and I'm outside, it's sunny out and I'm wearing these sick shades from them. So you can kind of get the idea with how affiliate marketing goes. You wanna use companies, use products, use brands that make sense to you and your following and then it will just kind of flow naturally and people won't be offended when you make a post about these products or something like that. Speaking of Jade Black, click the link in the description below, get yourself a sick discount on some blue light blocking shades or sunglasses for you and a loved one as Mother's Day is literally right around the corner. All right, moving on from the cheesy stuff, let's get back into the list number five. YouTube, right? You're viewing this video on YouTube. Now, I will say, obviously, if you're watching this video, when I post it, you will see my subscriber count. You will see how many followers I have on you know, social media accounts and such, but you will look at YouTube and you'll be like, okay, damn, there's no way that that guy's making money through YouTube. And you would be correct at this current point in time. And that's because YouTube themselves, to be able to be a creator and make money, you have to have a certain allotted following and you have to have a certain allotted amount of views and hours of views and so on and so forth. So there are stipulations to YouTube. That's why this is the fifth item on the list because of the difficulty that can come with it and making it. Now I have several people close to me who do make really, really good money on YouTube and they make a lot of videos. And that is really the king with this is that you have to make videos in order to make money because if you don't make a video, a person can't view it. YouTube can't tell that a person's view it. You don't make any money. You're a loser. Get out of here. Totally joking, but you get the point. Now YouTube has a lot of different avenues that you can actually make money. Uh, YouTube themselves, you can actually make money based on views through them through a creator fund, similar to TikTok and how their creator fund works. But really where the bread and butter comes in is with companies that advertise on the platform. We've all been there, you've seen it. You click into a video, you get hit with an ad. Five minutes into the video, you get hit with another ad, but this one's longer or you turn something on for your kids to watch and there's like 50 ads that take place in the meantime and all you wanna do is let your kids watch Coco Melon or Blippi. But really the biggest thing here with YouTube is that there's just so many different avenues that you can make money, uh, but you do have to be consistent, create good content that people wanna watch, entertaining content, and then as you get more subscribers, more views and so on and so forth, you will actually start to be able to have opportunities to make money through YouTube, uh, through their creator fund, you will also be able to make money from advertisers that want to advertise on your videos. And then you will also be able to open it up to companies that maybe you're working with um, already, you know, through social media and some of their advertising to do like sponsored videos where they'll pay you a set fee to make a video and then you just make that video. So that's how a lot of uh, creators on YouTube will make money. Now, moving on to the last and final item here which you kind of had to know it was coming seeing as I'm a real estate agent, but number six is real estate investing. Now, this is the sixth item on the list because it is the most difficult, requires the most capital typically, and it can be very, very challenging to make it in real estate investing. But I'm gonna kind of break it down in the most simplistic way with there's really two options and when it comes to real estate investing, when you're thinking about it. now. I'm not talking about commercial real estate investing. I'm talking more on like a residential or maybe like a you know small apartment complexes sort of level. I'm not really talking about these crazy you know 150 unit buildings that are out here for sale. I'm talking on a smaller scale because again, that's what you people want to know. You don't want to know about the 500 million dollar projects that it takes. You want to know about how you can buy a duplex for 150 thousand and then rent out each sign for 1,200 a month and have some positive cash flow into your bank account. But for today's video, I'm gonna be talking about two methods in real estate investing that can get you started into your first property. Now, the first one in real estate investing that is pretty, you know, pretty self-explanatory and pretty common is buy and hold, right? So you buy a property, maybe you make some updates to it, you rent the property, you have positive cash flow coming in, 
And then when the market gets extremely hot or that property has appreciated, you can either refinance it and do some creative things with money there, or you can hold on to it and just have forever cash flow, right? And I guess technically there is a third option, which is you can wait until the market's really, really hot, like it is right now, and just dump the property. However, usually when people buy and hold, they're in it for the long haul because they're getting positive cash flow. And then when their mortgage gets to a certain rate and they have a certain amount of equity, they can refinance and then use those funds into another property and blah, 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 right? But that's really what a lot of people are doing right now because you can really get into these properties very inexpensive and you can pretty much start making immediate cash flow uh, as soon as they're ready to rent. Now, the second way in real estate investing that is very, very prominent is flipping. And if anybody has ever turned on the glorious HGTV, you know what flipping is. You've got Flip or Flop, you know, all, all these other shows that pretty much have explained to you already what flipping is. But for those of you who haven't turned on HGTV or have no idea what I'm talking about, in a nutshell, you buy a property, you update the property, get it to a point where it's ready to go to market and sell it for a massive profit. The problem is with flipping, that massive profit piece at the end is always the variable that you don't know. Because when you purchase a property, a lot of times the best deals aren't found on Zillow or on the MLS. If you're an agent found off market, they're typically sight unseen and they can have a lot of issues with them that can cost a lot of money. So they you know, kind of buffer into that massive profit that you might make at the end. Now there's all kinds of different ways that you can get into these properties where you don't have to use your own money. But again, we're gonna save that for another video as this is just a broad topic of real estate investing. So that is it guys for today's video. The six ways, in my opinion, that you can make extra income, whether it's on the side or you just wanna make extra money because who doesn't like some extra money in their bank account? If you like this video, smash that like button for me. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this one or anything on men's lifestyle or anything closely related. Also, if you have any suggestions on any better ways to make money that I didn't mention here and you'd like to see another video, maybe about how you can learn more methods on making some extra income on the side, drop it down in the comments below. I love reading the comments, seeing what you guys have to say. So make sure that you make your voice heard. But that's it, guys. Stay tuned until the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.